I'm Jay Kingley, co-founder and CEO of Maven, your host of Fractionals Unplugged. I'm joined today by Marley Wagner, a fractional chief marketing officer who works with software or services companies with long sales cycles, recurring revenue, and relatively complex products. She helps them both attract new customers and also increases revenue from existing customers. Marley is based in Denver, Colorado. Welcome, Marley. Thank you so much, Jay. It's great to be with you. Looking forward to our conversation today. Welcome to Fractionals Unplugged, a podcast from Maven. You left the corporate world to build your own fractional executive business by infusing your intellectual property into all aspects of your revenue generation. Maven enables you to earn in excess of $500,000 per year and more as you scale. Imagine a pipeline so full that prospects who value what you do will be the ones knocking on your door. Jay Kingley, the CEO of Maven and his guests share their insight on how you can get out of struggle city and into success city and beyond. Enjoy today's episode. Well, Marley, assume I'm the CEO of a B2B ERP company who also has a consulting division that helps customers implement our software and adjust their operating processes to get full value from our offering. We bump into each other for the first time at the famous Gartner IT Symposium Expo, held not that far from me in Orlando, Florida. You've got a maximum of 60 seconds to give me your elevator pitch, go. You know, Jay, it won't be a surprise to the CEO that it is five times more expensive to acquire a new customer than it is to retain an existing one. And he'll also know that because of this data, marketers are being asked to shift their focus from exclusively attracting new customers to also increasing revenue from existing customers. The other thing he will probably have experienced is that simultaneously, customer success leaders are being asked to scale their team's engagement with those same existing customers using automation. Now, neither team knows exactly how to do it. This is the part he may not have the inside track to. No one knows who should own which components, but businesses like his desperately, desperately need to improve the cohesion of their digital experiences from prospect to customer and all the way through renewal and growth. I actually think that that is a relatively new trend. There are some historic silos there and silos are really hard uh, to get rid of. So I would imagine not every company out there is of a mindset to embrace what you have to say. So what is it that you look for when you're picking out the companies that could most benefit from what you're talking about. That's interesting. I see a lot of fractional leaders who say, oh, I work with this size company, startups or enterprises or or what have you. And while that is a a key component of your identity as a business, that's actually not what makes this problem relevant to you. Regardless if you're a startup, a scale up or an enterprise, I see um, three really big pain points that companies are going through that that spans all company sizes. Number one, budgets and teams are smaller. You know, we're past the phase of growth at any cost. That is no longer the reality. But these people and these teams and these leaders are still being asked to do more and make a bigger impact despite, you know, smaller budgets and teams. Number two, I'm seeing retention and growth targets and within existing customer bases. These are way higher than the past that impacts customer success teams massively. And then on the marketing side, this is a new metric marketers are being asked to measure and are being measured on in their job performance really for the first time. And both of these things are happening because of what sits in between the two organizations. Sales sales teams are selling less and it's really um, expanding to impact both marketing and customer success in these ways. 
We're seeing them both be held newly accountable to what you'll hear the word scale and engage over and over and over again. You have to scale, you have to engage with existing customers, but neither of these teams knows how to do that effectively. And it's really causing a huge increase in territory battles between the two organizations as well. So one of the things that I always tell the, the fractionals and consultants that we work with that's really important is understanding the stage of awareness. Now, the one place you should never play is in the unaware stage because you can try to educate and persuade in the ROIs about as close to zero as you'll ever get. So most deal with problem versus solution aware. I want to focus on those who are problem aware. What pain points would these problem aware companies be experiencing that would tell them, although they don't have the solution yet, they know they have got an issue. What, what are those triggers? You're really going to see companies who are noticing drops in um, retention rates, um, lots higher churn, two ways of saying the same thing, lower retention, higher churn, synonyms. You're also going to see companies who have really siloed teams. Marketing and customer success are not talking to each other. And sales plays a role here too, don't get me wrong. That's just not where I play. So even if you're noticing that silo between sales and CS or sales and marketing, that's kind of a red flag, that's a pain point. You don't want your teams living like that. And um, it's really a result of these underlying issues. So I wanna get your take on something. In early stage companies, you hear so much about product market fit and there's volumes written on first, how do you know you have it? What do you need to do to get it? And there's this sense that, okay, got it done, moving on to scalability now. <laughs> but that to me presupposes a very static world. So my, my question to you is, is this is a trigger for you, in effect, a company starts to lose that product market fit. They're established, but they begin to lose it because customers have shifted, uh, competitors, new ones have come in, changing expectations. And so that traditional, we've got this, let's move on to this and we can work in silos, begins to break down. What are your thoughts on that? I think that's a great call out, Jay. I think. You know, I think there's a lot of ego attached to that product market fit, especially when you're in the sort of startup or scale up uh, business environment. This thing that you have created, you're so proud, whether, you know, whether you're a founder and a CEO or, or just a leader in the business, there's so much pride, there's so much ego attached to that, um, that I think it can be hard to even see or acknowledge or accept that maybe that product market fit is is shifting right we don't even have to say slipping but let's go shifting right? to your point competitors there's a new competitor to this direction of your product does that mean you go in the other direction maybe maybe not but to at least evaluate that that new um new factor i think is really critical and so when businesses find themselves in that position i think it's worth taking a step back worth taking a deep breath saying, hey, yeah, we had this spot on six months ago, a year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, whatever it is, is it still spot on today? Because the reality is there is no done with any of this. In marketing and customer success and anything I do, it's never done. It's always changing, it's always evolving, it's always growing. And, and that product market fit is a really great way to identify that. I think there's a lot of companies that when they look at their customer base, they, they think about their touch points, they think about their relationship. But the thing that they don't think about is every day competitors are reaching out to your customers saying, we have a better way forward. Mm -hmm. And that at some point begins to shift what people's expectations are of working with you. And that's this, I think sometimes this silent killer is by the time it strikes and you and you become aware of it, it, it's almost a little bit too late. So this is, as you say, not a once and done, this is an ongoing process. Now let's say that these companies, they, they get the problem, 
they they are committed to resolving it, there has to be gain for the pain. Mm. So talk about the outcomes that they're going to be able to get when this pain goes away. The first outcome is really about um, about the the day to day lives of your employees. Because this situation causes so much tension between departments, so much um, conflict and sort of push and pull, um, really what we're looking to solve here is to get clear marching orders and swim lanes, whatever terminology you want to use, clear division of, of time and effort and projects for both your marketing and your customer success teams to really be able to collaborate with each other, work effectively across those silos, break those down, rather than constantly uh, being in competition, having it be, well, no, I own this and no, I own that. It's really about figuring out, hey, let's come to an agreement together about who owns what, Let's divide and conquer once we have agreed on those. And then let's work back and forth collaboratively to be more effective in what we're both trying to accomplish. The second big thing here, and really this is the ultimate goal, is to increase the engagement with your existing customers. That's the short-term win, which in the mid to long term is going to lead to those higher retention and growth rates that you're looking for. This is not an overnight thing. Your customers aren't renewing every day. If we're talking about a, a yearly and annual subscription model, which is the most common, it might take you a year to see the impact of an initiative like this. So this is not an overnight magic pill by any means, but by taking those steps now, by first creating the clear division of labor, then seeing an increase in engagement, then in the longer term, you're going to see those ultimate lagging metrics that you want to see in retention and growth. So that old joke, you know, if this were easy, there'd be no need for you. So why do you think these companies are struggling to deal with these issues so that they can get these outcomes that you talked about? Why is this so hard for them? I love this question because really it, it shouldn't be, but it is. It shouldn't be this hard, but it is hard. And now I am a marketer, so no shade to marketers, but marketers are fundamentally flawed in how they communicate with existing customers because we have all long been trained to communicate only with new prospects. On the flip side, customer success leaders are excellent at uh, um, creating and building really effective and powerful, valuable one-to-one -one engagement between their teams and their customers. But almost none of those customer success leaders have the digital or technical experience required to create an effective, not just efficient campaign structure and strategies for their existing customers. So each team has a component, component of what's needed here to accomplish the larger strategic initiative, but silos and that lack of experience on each side prevents them from fitting those puzzle pieces together. This results in what I like to call random acts of marketing, if you will, <laughs> coming from both teams and probably more teams within your company as well. I guarantee you, if you interviewed everyone in your company about what automated messages they're sending. There's way more than you think. And usually this creates an even worse customer experience than where you started, which is obviously the opposite of what you're trying to accomplish. So what makes these struggles both important and urgent? What makes them important and urgent? A lot of companies are having sort of an aha moment about this. Some perhaps have seen declining trending retention rates for a while now, and they're just freaking out a little bit. It's kind of a like, crap, what do we do now? Um, and it's something that I think has quietly snuck up on a lo lot of companies that they weren't necessarily expecting. There's been so many shifts in the larger economy and, and the business world in general. I think it's really been a surprise that people are, are not really prepared to handle. Now, for a client to be problem aware, and given that problem is both important and urgent. Mm -hmm. Of course, they, they know something's wrong, but they don't know the solution, but they know they need to do something about it and to try to figure this out. So one of two things really has to be true. 
either the clients do not understand the root cause, the thing that's really causing the symptoms that they're experiencing, or they think they do know, but what they believe it is, isn't actually the real cause. Mm. So whether it's ignorance or they're misinformed, they don't get it yet. You do, Marley. So share your insight as to what's really underneath it. What is the root cause of these problems? I love this question, Jay. Um, you know, the root cause here really requires a little bit of a history lesson in the subscription economy with the fundamental shift in how buyers buy with, you know, far less upfront costs, the new expectation of recurring revenue models and this rapid rise of the new normal, if you will, of the cloud and customer success. Customers' expectations have also shifted for how you engage with them. They don't want your marketing to sound like marketing before they buy. After they have signed on the dotted line, customers don't actually want to have to talk to a person every single time they have a question about your product or your company or your service. They want a self-service model where they can engage. They want an online experience that makes it easy for them, that's the key here, easy for them to get what they need. If you think about it, you don't want those things when the roles are reversed and you're the customer rather than the vendor. That, that desire is not necessarily inherently a problem, but the problem arises when that customer desire is a mi mismatch with your team's capabilities to deliver the experience that they want. That's the real root cause here. Well, now that these companies, thanks to you, uh, have this insight as to the underlying cause for the struggles, and when they get that, aha, <laughs> now I see what she's talking about. What are the steps they need to take to leave what I call their struggle city to get to their success city? I think a lot of companies and leaders have tried to sort of hodgepodge solve this on their own. This doesn't usually work. So my guess is people out there have probably tried something like the random acts of marketing that I mentioned earlier. They've tried to throw out automation to their customers. They should, number one, stop doing that. Stop sending automated messages that are not part of a broader strategy and that aren't helpful to your customers. Just, a, just an automated email for the sake of an automated email, no more, all done. Instead, the focus has to turn from you as a vendor, from that inward look, has to turn outward towards your customers. The perspective here must be all about your customers. And as I mentioned earlier, really a key, key component of this and what to do about it is that marketing and customer success must create a plan together. It has to be together. It cannot be one or the other, cannot be one dictating to the other. They have to create a plan together to craft a digital engagement strategy. Each team must mutually agree upon this path forward before anybody does any building. Well, this is great stuff for all those software and services companies out there who by and large have yet to figure this out. We're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we're gonna learn a bit about Marley. You've spent over 20 years in corporate and now you've stepped off the hamster wheel to run your own show as a fractional executive. Whether you're flying solo, leading a small firm, or running a boutique, Maven is your fast track to earning over $500,000 annually, and potentially more, without the grueling corporate hours. This is your shot at the freedom, flexibility, and independence you've worked so hard to achieve. By infusing your intellectual property into all aspects of your revenue generation, Maven transcends the limitations of other sales and marketing approaches. You'll have a pipeline so full that prospects who truly value what you bring to the table will be the ones knocking on your door. You'll work directly with Jay and Taz, who've led the way for over 30 years, helping countless executives make this leap. Contact j.kingley at fractionalmaven.com. Spots are limited, so act now to build the business and life you deserve. Welcome back. We're talking to Marley Wagner, a fractional chief marketing officer who works with software and service companies to bring together marketing and customer success. Marley, let's find out a bit more about you. 
What experiences did you have in your career that enabled you to develop the insights that you shared with us that I don't frequently hear for most other fractional CMOs. Thanks, Jay. My background was as a marketer for a long time. And then I found myself running both marketing and digital customer success consulting for a customer success agency. I did this for over five years. And during that time, I used these strategies that we've talked about to help dozens of B2B technology companies build their digital engagement strategies for their customers from everyone from teeny tiny startups to multi-billion dollar enterprises. So what's happened in your life, personally or professionally, that most explains why you're doing what you do today? Like I said, after being a digital marketer for my entire career, I sort of accidentally fell into the customer success world. I took a chance on a job with a consulting firm. After over five years there, I had really honed my love of both marketing and customer success to create my niche specialty. After my daughter was born, I decided to venture out on my own as a fractional executive and consultant and take control of my work-life balance in that way. It's been an amazing decision. So how's it going? How's it going? It's going great. <laughs> I get to be a mom and I get to do the work that I love. And I've, I've had quite a bit of unsolicited advice that I should, um, I should pick either marketing or customer success. And I am firmly going to stand right in the middle because I think it's that important. Well, freedom, flexibility, control, independence is why you have your own business and you're not working for someone else. And that is clearly valuable. I applaud you for that, which leads into... So what's next for you over the coming 12 months? Just continuing to grow my business, helping more and more of these B2B companies do more with less as they're all being asked to do. I am sure we're going to have people in our audience who are listening in, who are going to want to reach out to you and continue the conversation. So what would be the best way for them to contact you? Absolutely. I would love to hear feedback, questions, anything you want to chat about um, from today's episode. Feel free to shoot me an email. It's marley at marleywagner.com or find me on LinkedIn by just searching me by first and last name. I think I'm the only Marley Wagner out there. Great. And, I, and Marley, I'll put all that in the show notes so that it makes it super easy for people to look it up when uh, they have that opportunity and reach out and Connect, which is something I would 100% recommend that you do. And Marley, I want to thank you for being a guest on our Fractionals Unplugged show. Be sure to subscribe to both our podcast on all the major platforms and our YouTube channel for our videos. Until next time, make an impact on your clients and family on your terms, securing your independence with the freedom, flexibility, and control that you've earned.